So, uh, my name is uh, Espen Rubertsen. I am a PhD student at the Center for Bioinformatics at the Norwegian Elixir Node. I will be presenting today's webinar with Inge Alexander Rocknes, and we will be presenting one of the pilot actions within Elixir called Marine Metagenomics towards domain specific service. Uh, so, the outline of our webinar looks like this. Uh, I'm first going to start off with giving an introduction to metagenomics. Uh, and then I'll continue with uh, the motivation for the pilot, uh, the objectives, and then uh, I'll, um, and then I'll go on with the uh, project deliveries within the project. And then Alexander, Inge Alexander will take over and uh, give you some info on technical issues. Uh, about MetaPipe, Galaxy, and uh, the cloud part of our project. And then we'll get to the status, the current status of the uh, project. And then he'll talk about some uh, future perspective regarding uh, Elixir Accelerate and how this, pro how this pilot project um, couples up with that. So, uh, metagenomics is the study of genetic material recovered directly from environmental samples. And uh, as you can see from this picture, these samples can come from virtually anywhere. For example, marine samples from the ocean seabed, gut intestinal samples from humans, or even insects to study, for example, symbiotic uh, relationships. So with traditional cultivation, this procedure involves growing the sample in a medium of choice and then trying to isolate the DNA from the species that actually grow afterwards. Um, however, with this method, we can only access about maybe 1% of the total DNA from the sample because the medium doesn't reflect the complex source of nutrition and other factors necessary for growth uh, in nature. So with metagenomics, we can isolate the DNA directly from the environment, which means that in principle, we can access 100% of the total DNA in the sample, depending on sequencing technology and lab protocols used, of course. And of course, when you can access that much of the genetic resources of a sample, only your imagination sets the limit of what, you, what type of analysis you can actually perform. For example, you can analyze the metatranscriptome of the sample where you isolate the mRNA of a sample and map this to known species uh, to explore, for example, how they react to uh, different environmental changes. And metagenomics is a relatively new field of research. The term metagenomics was first uh, coined in an article by Joe Handelsman and colleagues in 1998, where they, among other things, mentioned that soil might be an untapped resource for chemistry. And um, a lot has happened since then, and it has happened very rapidly, which is largely due to the introduction of high-throughput sequencing at the start of the 21st century. Uh, so this is a chart from an article in Nature Biotechnology where they have compared relative computation power available against total sequencing data produced per day since 1996. And as you can see, around 2006, a new problem effectively uh, presents itself. So production of data generated by sequencing grows so fast that we, ca we are not capable of analyzing all the data sets produced because of the sheer amount of computation power needed to yeah, actually handle this task. Um, even though metagenomics has come a long way, most of the research performed can be summed up in three specific questions. So who is there? What are they doing? How are they doing it? And these questions relate to specific types of tasks within metagenomics. For example, to answer the question, who is there, you can do a taxonomic classification, which will give you an overview of the different organisms present in your sample, based either on 16S rRNA or other marker gene databases. Uh, similarly, to answer the question, what are they doing, you need to analyze some functional annotation of the sample, such as PFAM domains or gene ontology classification 
to get an idea of what's going on in your sample. Lastly, to answer the question, how are they doing it? You might want to combine these two types of analysis to somehow get an idea of who's doing what, basically. Now, luckily, you don't have to do this work manually, as there exist some automatic pipelines which can answer these questions for you. Uh, these, these pipelines are usually workflows consisting of different tools and databases linked together to produce an analysis in a specific format or using a specific visualization tool. Uh, so on this slide, you can see a simplified pipeline overview that sums up some of the general steps that it's uh, often involved in such a pipeline. So your sample is sequenced by a sequencing machine for example, the Illumina MySec, which you can see in this example, and uh, a data set of reads is produced from the sample. The size of this data can vary anywhere from maybe uh, a couple of hundred megabytes for a genome to terabytes of data for a really big uh, metagenome. It is also important to filter this data set, as the quality or quality of reads can vary a lot. Some pipelines include an assembly step where you want to build larger contigs from the reads and then annotate these contigs. Uh, but this step is not mandatory. I mean, you can work with reads just as well. Uh, then there is gene prediction to find the genes uh, present in these contigs or reads. So you can see them marked in red on the, uh, the bar. Uh, these genes are annotated with selected annotation tools and databases uh, offered by the pipeline for example, Uniprot or PFAM, and this annotation is exported in a format of choice, or visualized, for example, on a web page or with some kind of third-party program, for example, Artemis, which is uh, shown in this, uh, this figure. Um, so in order to analyze a sample, you, need, uh, you basically need two important things. You need software, such as pipelines, databases and other tools, and you need to back it up with some serious hardware, like big clusters of computers or supercomputers, as they're also called. And there is a need for pipelines that can handle large-scale analysis of big studies and projects, um, especially within the marine field, where data sets are typically taxonomically complex, complex with really high diversity. So the aim of this pilot project is to harmonize the existing pipelines, establish long-term sustainable service platforms, and to build a user community for marine metagenomics analysis in, uh, in Alexir. And the project has six, uh, deliverers, or six main deliverables, where four of them are, are more hands-on, and the last two involves reporting, basically. Uh, the first one concerns harmonization of our two metagenomic pipelines, namely MetaPipe, which we use for most of our projects at the Norwegian Elixir node, and then the uh, EBI metagenomics pipeline. So I will show you a comparison of these two pipelines uh, on the next couple of slides. Um, we want to make them interoperable, at least to a certain degree, so it will be possible to uh, both compare results between them and uh, interchange data between certain steps in these pipelines. Deliverable two is to assess new functionally specialized databases uh, to see if they can enrich the output from the pipeline pipelines in, in any way. The third deliverable is to investigate maybe other means of taxonomic assignment. And the last deliverable, which doesn't involve reporting, is to explore and prototype with Embassy Cloud to see if this is something that can be maybe utilized somehow in the future. Uh, so first off, this is um, how the two pipelines look on their respective websites. So MetaPipe on the left, which is the pipeline we use uh, on our sample at Elixir Norway is geared towards bioprospecting and uh, the marine domain. And on the right hand side is the pipeline used by uh, EBI Metagenomics Portal, which is a more generic pipeline. Uh, we have um, 
we have integrated MetaPipe with Galaxy, which is a web-based platform for bioinformatics analysis, where you can um, access many different tools and you can chain them uh, up in workflows as you see fit your project. So whatever components you need, you can make a workflow from it. Uh, the EBI Metagenomics portal is more of a standalone service where you can log in with your unique uh, username and both upload your samples via the uh, European Nucleotide Archive and access your sample analysis uh, uh, when they are done at their site. Uh, on this slide, you can see a more um, technical comparison. So on the right hand side, you will see MetaPipe version 1, basically, and then on the right-hand side is the uh, EPI Metagenomics portal version 2, which came out in February. And as you can see, the, um, the major components of these two pipelines are uh, quite similar. Both of them uh, contain a taxonomic classification part, they have pre-processing to quality filter the reads, and they have a CDS analysis or a functional analysis. Uh, but some of the uh, minor components, so the tools available, are a bit different. For example, um, uh, the EBI pipeline uses uh, a, um, a sort of specialized form of Interpro scan, which has uh, five or six uh, different databases and tools available. Uh, while in MetaPipe we use uh, BLAST towards Uniprot, we have a PRIAM, which is especially geared towards finding enzymes, and we have also implemented Interpro Scan 5 in our uh, our pipeline. And we also use a uh, a visualization program called MetaRep, which is really handy for uh, mining for enzymes, among other things. Um, there are some uh, some uh, or the main big differences difference between these two pipelines is that our pipeline. Um, uses assembly, while EBI, Metagenomics Portal, works straight on the reads. And this means that uh, if you're interested in more complete sequences, you, you would use MetaPipe, but you would also uh, get a lot less uh, sequences in total. However, if you use the EBI, Metagenomics Portal um, pipeline, you wouldn't, you'll get more fragmented sequences, but also a lot more sequences. And uh, I should also say that uh, one of the deliverables is, of course, to find uh, to make these these uh, pipelines um, interoperable. So we have identified uh, certain steps, for example, between pre-processing, taxonomic classification, which are obvious uh, obvious steps for uh, to, to make them interoperable. In the sense that you could, for example, do pre-processing uh, with one pipeline and then taxonomic classification with the other. Yeah, I guess that is what I had. So uh, Inga Alexander would now continue the presentation with the last bunch of slides. Yeah. So uh, these are the components that make up the integration between Galaxy, Stallo, and MetaPipe. Uh, so Stallo uh, is our local supercomputer. Uh, it has 750 nodes and 14,000 cores and 12.8 uh, terabytes of uh, DRAM. Uh, there are three components that bind these uh, tools together. Uh, so the first component on the left uh, is a Galaxy tool that we wrote as a wrapper for MetaPipe. Uh, the role of the wrapper is to run the MetaPipe start script uh, with the parameters provided in the Galaxy user interface, uh, and then it waits for MetaPipe to finish. Uh, the second component, uh, which is the bottom arrow, uh, is the submission scripts that are generated by MetaPipe uh, to submit jobs to a cluster scheduler. Uh, the third component, uh, which is the arrow on the right, is uh, LVR, which is, uh, which is now known as Pulsar, uh, which is a program developed by the Galaxy team that lets uh, Galaxy run a tool on a different machine from the Galaxy instance itself without the requirement of a shared file system. Uh, LVR is used to execute the MetaPipe wrapper on the, Gal on the Stallo frontend. Uh, so LVR supports 
two modes of operation. One is uh, via HTTP and the second one is via an AMQP message queue. Uh, I'll get back to this in the next slide. Uh, so in summary, we made a Galaxy wrapper for running the MetaPipe start script. LVR ensures that the script is run on the correct machine and the MetaPipe start script submits its own jobs to Stalo. So this is an overview of the architecture. Uh, the arrows in this drawing show the direction of the TCP connections. Uh, the Stalo front-end machine uh, is behind a firewall, so it only allows outgoing connections. Uh, because of this, LVR is set up in queue mode and connects to a Rabbit MQ message broker on the outside of the firewall. Uh, this is where LVR and Galaxy communicate events about new and completed jobs. Uh, the Galaxy tool and data sets are transferred by LVR, making an HTTP connection back to Galaxy API. Uh, Galaxy is configured to use LVR whenever the Galaxy tool for MetaPipe is selected. Uh, this ensures that the MetaPipe startup script is run on Stalo. Uh, we are currently in progress of implementing version 2 of MetaPipe. Uh, this version will have a standalone web GUI for submitting jobs and as a part of our use case, it will be provided as an Elixir service. One of the things we did uh, during our pilot was to explore and prototype with the Embassy Cloud at EBI. Uh, our goal was to see how difficult it would be to deploy MetaPipe to the cloud. Uh, in order to do this, we set up a virtual cluster, installed Slurm and Blast, and ran some tests with Blast, which is the most compute-demanding step of MetaPipe. Uh, we found that Blast ran efficiently on Embassy Cloud, and thus concluded that MetaPipe will run efficiently in the cloud as well. Um, here is the status uh, of the pilot action. Uh, so the pipelines have been harmonized. Uh, uh, new tools and databases have been tested and integrated. Uh, MetaPipe has been integrated into Galaxy. Embassy Cloud has been tested. Uh, EBI Metagenomics Portal version 2 was launched in February, uh, and MetaPipe version 2 is currently in progress. So some future uh, aspects. Uh, the pilot will be finished in end of August, uh, but the efforts to develop sustainable service platforms will be continued in, Elix in Accelerate as part of Work Package 6, which is Mara and Metagenomics Infrastructure as a driver for research and industrial innovation. The main objective for this use case is to develop a sustainable metagenomics infrastructure to enhance research and industrial innovation within the marine domain. The main objective will be achieved by developing and implementing selected standards for the marine uh, domain by developing databases specific for marine metagenomics. Uh, in addition, tools and pipelines will be implemented, and we will also develop a search engine for interrogation of marine metagenomics datasets and also establish training workshops for end users in collaboration with uh, Word Package 11. <clears throat> 